And this is Weapon Weapons. You smuggled classified documents out of Russia. Is that true? That is true. Okay. Is that the end of the story? Yeah, that's it. Okay. We're done. <laughs> that's it. So today, let's talk about that. Let's, I've, I've heard, you know, you've informed me a bunch about this, but it is also known, not only to intelligence agencies, but also to the public, that somehow you went to Russia at this opportune time and got a bunch of information about their UFO programs. So I want to hear about that. Well, the actual smuggling part of it um, was uh, exhilarating, yep. exciting, downright scary probably crazy in retrospect, looking back at it now, if they had caught me, what I was doing, I'd still be in a gulag somewhere. Yeah. We, we know what happens to Russian journalists who cross Putin. We know what happens to business people who cross Putin. An American journalist was recently arrested in Russia for espionage purposes. Uh, I, I can pretty much assure you that he didn't do what we did back then, but yeah. um, I'll tell you the story. So well, among the first people we interviewed was De Dr. Kapranov. He had been highly skeptical. He didn't know where this was going to lead. But after eight months of digging into this stuff and talking to high-level government people about UFOs, he realized, holy crap, this is real. Russian physicist Nikolai Kapranov, a national security advisor to the Soviet parliament, spent months making the crucial contacts with sources who would not otherwise be available to Westerners and who almost certainly would never have been accessible to Western journalists. Kapranov had heard rumblings about UFO studies over the years, but he was far from being a believer. That is, until he started asking questions of people in high places. More and more I started to think that this is something for real. And uh, there are facts, and I've seen some materials one can't, you know, just, just drop. But what I learned about the UFO is that they're certainly for real, and uh, that the UFO is the one fragment of a very diversive and strong uh, phenomenon. The military people are looking at that very seriously. With Kapranov's assistance, our team succeeded in making contact with a previously hidden echelon of UFO researchers, dedicated scientists who had pursued their interest in alien visitors during the darkest days of communism and whose findings have never before seen the light of day. So he told us, look, I didn't really think this was going to lead anywhere, but now I'm amazed to find out that there really have been these studies and investigations uh, for a long time. The second person we met was maybe the most important person of all. His name was Colonel Boris Sokolov. And he was from a distinguished military family. His father and grandfather had been high-ranking officers in the Russian military. And he was given an amazing assignment in 1978. In 1978, there was an incident called the Petrozavodsk incident. Petrozavodsk is a place where they would launch missiles for satellite systems, space program, things of that sort. Something happened over Petrozavodsk in 1978 this gig there's photos that I have that we got from the Russian military of this gigantic sort of jellyfish looking object over the Russian military base. The official explanation was, oh yeah, a, 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 a Russian missile exploded. This was a mistake, sorry. That's not what happened. It was something unknown. And the reason we know that is because the Russians went ahead and as a result of that incident and other incidences that have been looked at, they launched a study of UFOs. And the order went out from Colonel Sokolov, who was put in charge of this amazing program. He said, every unit in the vast Russian military empire, Army, Navy, Air Force, all of them, anybody who sees an unknown ball of light, a mystery object, a craft, a UFO, whatever the heck it is, you have to collect that information, interrogate the witnesses, put it all into a report, and it all has to go one place. And the place it went is Colonel Boris Sokolov's desk. First, an order was given to those pilots to chase the UFO and to shoot it. There were uh, 40 episodes like this, like that. Hundreds of Sokolov's most intriguing cases were compiled into this thick volume. Although much of the data is still being evaluated, it appears the Russians accumulated a mammoth amount of information about UFOs. The assumption that these craft were from somewhere else, perhaps outer space, became a foregone conclusion. Wow, and you, you were able to find this guy, but what is that? What is the jellyfish thing you're talking about? Explain that a little bit. This is Petrozavodsk, because there's a fairly famous photo now of an object, these shards of light 
that looked like a jellyfish. Like and then a, that was classified like as a UAP or UFO. Yeah, a, the Russian government officially said, oh yeah, this is a, a, a rocket that blew up. But the fact is they launched a secret study of UFOs because they knew that's not what it was. It was yeah. something else and they needed to get to the bottom of it. So the person they put in charge with Colonel Sokolov had a distinguished record. He was retired at the time we found him and, and he was he was a little nervous about talking to us, but he warmed up to us. And unlike all the Russians that we met, you know, his, his abode was pretty humble. Uh, it was clear he doesn't make a lot of money. His retirement benefits from the Russian military, he's, he's not well off. But he spread out a bunch of food. It must have been like a, a month's salary for the guy. He and his wife welcomed us into his home. We s struck up a conversation. Eventually, he loosened up a little bit and started talking to us about the program that he uh, headed up. He, he put it this way in yeah. one of the interviews we did. He said, in essence, the entire USSR was one big UFO listening post. It was a tremendous experiment. It was, in all likelihood, the largest UFO investigation ever done in the history of the world, bigger than anything we've done. So, so Russia was studying sincerely UFOs for all those decades, and the world didn't know about it officially in any way. No, we had, we yeah. had no idea. Maybe there was somebody in the CIA and knew about this, sure. but it was kept very quiet until we came back with the goods. He said this le the study, that study lasted 10 full years. Thousands and thousands of reports came in, and some of them were really spectacular. And I was allowed to not only see the, the documents, but to bring a lot of them back. And uh, I'll give you well, some highlights. You weren't allowed to bring a lot of them back, but somehow you obtained them in Russia, right? So, so what is that like? So basically you're talking with a guy who headed a UFO program in Russia, one of the, probably the top dogs for the UFO study. Do you think he was one of the top dogs? He was the top dog. He was the top dog, the top dog. of UFO studies in Russia during the Cold War. For a whole 10 year period. And you're sitting down having dinner with his family because yeah. you just had a hunch maybe you'd be able to get something good. Yeah. And he showed us some things. And then later we made some arrangements to try to get some physical copies, the original, the original documents, not just copies. And um, starting with the orders, the orders that went out from the Ministry of Defense that described this, that went to every military unit in the USSR, or what used to be the USSR, and they all had to comply. Now, um, there are some limitations on it. As Sokolov and others were to tell us later, some of the best cases during that 10-year period very likely were siphoned off by the KGB. There was a KGB officer assigned to pretty much all Ministry of Defense units at one point or another. So anything that was really tasty or uh, interesting went to them first. Uh, a lot of that stuff went to KGB that I did not get to see, but the stuff that was left over was absolutely spectacular. Um, he, he said there was thousands and thousands of cases. He didn't have to have the whole number, but he gave us some highlights. For one thing, uh, he said there were 40 different incidents in those, uh, in those 10 years where Russian warplanes were chased after UFOs. The UFOs would appear in the sky or on radar. They sent the, the warplanes after them to shoot them down. And I, I think I can quote him exactly. He said, a standing order was given to our pilots to chase UFOs and to shoot if necessary. There were 40 cases in which our pilots chased UFOs, tried to shoot. In most cases, the UFO would speed up and get away. But in three cases, the pilots crashed. Two of them died. After that, the order was given that pilots who see UFOs should change course and get out. All pilots agreed. We later, in a later visit when I went back to Russia, we interviewed General Maltsev, who was the commander of the Russian air defenses. And he said, look, we, we pushed, put out that order because in, in effect, we concluded that the UFOs had, quote, incredible capacities for retaliation. Don't shoot them. They will blow your ass out of the sky, which is what they did.